Welcome everyone to the MyNet education session uh, for this month, Searching for Images. I'm Orvi Dingwall. I'm Christine New. And we will be your presenters for today. I'm going to take us through the first bit and Christine's going to take us through the second bit. And we will just launch right in. So here in GoToWebinar, webinar, if at any time you have any questions, um, you can do the uh, into the chat box or the questions box. If you've lost your GoToWebinar menu, so I know sometimes this happens, um, you can click on this little flower at the bottom of your screen, and then um, then your your sort of uh, menu box should uh, come up. Or you may sideways arrow and then you can drop down the questions section and you can enter your question and we will um, then answer it. So after today's session, we will be circulating our slides and Christine's going to be taking us through a live demo and we have slides um, that sort of mirror a bunch of the things that she's doing. So. Uh, any links you see, you don't need to worry about um, scrambling to write anything down. We will send that to you and we'll also be sending out a brief survey just to see how you found today's session. We have four objectives for today. The first, as always, if you've ever been to one of our sessions before, is we want to make sure you know about MyNet's core services. Um, we're understand Creative Commons licenses. Now, if that doesn't have you on the edge of your seat, I don't know what will. Um, we're going to make sure you know how to provide appropriate attribution when using images. And in all, uh, in all seriousness, we think that the sort of thing that you're probably really here for is where do you go to find these images that you can use? So what is MyNet? MyNet stands for Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network. It is a service provided to staff of Manitoba Health, seniors and active living, all fee-for-service physicians in the province, and staff of participating regional health authorities. This is our team. Um, myself, Christine, and Gail are your librarians, and Cheryl is uh, our technician. And if you've ever need, had trouble with accessing your up-to-date account, or if you've ever needed a full text article, then um, Cheryl is the one that uh, connects you. So um, if you don't already, please make sure you register for a library card. The sessions that we provide here today are available for free. Anybody is uh, welcome to uh, attend. Um, but having a library card helps, um, helps us help you so that anytime you need to submit a request, you've already got a card and we can just process your request. So um, we have uh, four core services. The first is literature searches. So if you need a search done on any topic, we are happy to do that search for you. Um, and anytime you need a full text article, um, whether you've heard about it from a friend or if you've hit a paywall when you've been searching on Google or PubMed, don't ever pay money, don't ever go without, just send us a message and we can get that article for you. We do offer a current awareness service uh, to send you customized alerts uh, every week of new research information. And we offer education sessions. We have a regular lineup. We'll be announcing the winter ones very soon. Um, and we also do customized ones. So if you um, and your team were interested in something specific, uh, we are happy to create that session or um, do one of the sessions we've done before. And um, the, uh, health professionals in the province also have access to a provincial license for UpToDate. So if you are interested in UpToDate, and want to know more, we've got um, all the details on our website, or you can always contact us. So how do I use an image that I didn't create? The first thing is you can get permission from whoever owns it. You can pay for it, or um, you can figure out what kinds of things you can use for free, and you can learn about uh, the public domain and the Creative Commons, which is what we'll be talking about today. 
Um, and you can also ensure that you are following the conditions of fair dealing. So those are all the ways that you can use um, you can use an image. Um, and I, we're gonna I'm gonna talk us through sort of the technical things that will then set us up for when we're doing uh, when Christine takes us to the fun things and takes us um, to find images that we might want to use in, in presentations or, or different kinds of things. So there's four elements that we're going to talk about. Fair dealing, um, which in America, they call it fair use. It's basically the same. Um, the public domain, creative commons, and copyright. So the first thing is about copyright. So it used to be really common, and we're seeing a trend develop, um, but when somebody created something, they would say, I created this, I don't want anyone else to use it unless they're paying money to me to use it. Um, and if you want to use it, you've got to go through the rights um, to pay to use it. And so, um, but just because somebody created something doesn't necessarily mean they own the copyright. Um, uh, for example, I don't know if you remember when Chris Hatfield was in space and he was singing the song by David Bowie and then it got pulled down off the internet and everyone was outraged at Bowie and Bowie said like, I don't own the rights to this song, man. Like it's not, it's not me. This happens, right? Somebody creates um, an image or a song or whatever it is, but then um, somebody else may own the rights to it. So you can't just say, oh, well, you know, um, Christine wrote this book and I want to use it. I'll just contact Christine and she can give me uh, permissions. It might not be um, Christine's. So you have to look into who owns the copyright on the work that you're using. Um, here in Canada, um, copyright is, uh, is in effect for the duration of the whoever owns the copyright, um, the creator, uh, for their lifetime plus 50 years. Um, so that's a long time. Um, and in other countries, there are different lengths. So in the United States and the United Kingdom, it's 70 years. So um, we're just touching on this, not so that you can like, you know, run calculations of, oh, this is copyright, it was copyright in this date, then I can use it at this time. It's really just to give an overview of uh, if you see this copyright symbol, the kinds of things that you want to start thinking about. Um, and then in, oh, sorry, I thought I had one more. Oh, okay, that was all I was going to say about copyright. Um, and then fair dealing is then sometimes um, you can use works, even if they are copyrighted, if you're using them for these items that are here in bold so research private study education news reporting etc um, and probably for many of you um, it is education or private study that is is most relevant so if something is copyrighted um, you can still use it in education uh, but there are some parameters so you can't make a million copies and distribute them you know uh, like if we wanted every health professional in the province to let's say read a certain article um, even if it was for the purpose of education we can't just make copies of it and send it all out um, there are still some stipulations but what it does mean is that if you're using a work for any of these these reasons um, it does fall under fair dealing as we call it in Canada then there is the public domain and when you're searching for images on the internet this is the area where you have two thumbs up um, because as I folded here, no permission whatsoever is needed to copy or use public domain works. So that's great. If you see it and you see that it's something in the public domain, you can use it. So this includes things that their copyright has expired um, or things that were automatically put into the public domain. So that, for example, everything produced by the U.S. government, it's in the public domain. Sadly, well, in Canada, oh, sorry. Most things, actually. There are some exceptions. There are some exceptions. So most. you have to check okay. still, but most things. Thank you. This is when I miss us being in person side by side because you, <laughs> because it's a bit more casual to you. Um, you don't hear so much when I can't see you. Um, so please, Christine will continue to, um, to uh, correct me if I get uh, things a little bit off. 
or a log off. So, um, right, public domain. Just because something was created, you know, more than 50 years past the person who created it, their death, um, there's all kinds of tricky things that the people who own the copyright that they do. So they might release a new edition of something and there might be some subtle changes or they might have new, like it might be things like artwork or maybe they've updated the language in a certain way. And then that um, becomes a new document and then it's got a new copyright on it. So um, it's really one of these things. I mean, some things are very, very clearly in the public domain. It's more just those things that are old and that have been copyrighted just because they're old and copyrighted does, and just because they've passed that 50 years past the author's death doesn't necessarily mean that they are then in the public domain. So it requires a little bit of, of work or digging around or you can come to some of these great sites and I'll just take us to a couple of them and um, because there are these two, there's a couple of these um, which is these are uh, repositories of places uh, that have images and different things that are in the public domain. So I'm just going to come to this one. And I will increase this so that you can see it a bit better, I hope. And um, how's that looking, Christine? Is it okay? Yes, it looks good. Okay, good. I've lost my, we used to be able to see it to show me the audience view and I can't, I can't see that. So if I scroll down here, um, you can see that there's this list of collections, US government resources, subject-based collections, art, automotive, clip art, et cetera, music, um, and post postage stamps, all kinds of things. So if any of these are the things that you're looking for, um, you can come here and I'll just choose, I'll just choose art. And then it lists these different sites where there are um, images in the public domain. So I'm just going to choose one at random. And so any, anything on these sites are in the public domain and you could take them, you can put them in your presentation, you could print them and sell them, you can do whatever you want to do uh, because they are in the public domain. And of course, because we are live, it took forever to um, uh, to look through. So this, um, so you can explore the art. There's different resources. There's different work. Um, all kinds of stuff. And I'll take us. So that was art yesterday. I and you can see U.S. government resources. They list the different things, like at the Smithsonian, the Fish and Wildlife Service all kinds of things. So, um, and then similarly in the public domain review in their collections, they, um, and I think it'll still be small, so just blow it up here and we'll let it come up. And so here you can shop and you can look at their um, different images and some are kind of older looking um, but some are like really creative and new. And so if you were looking for something to make a meme out of, like you could take take this one and pop some text on it and make a meme. Um, any of these are available for you to do what whatever you want to do. So these are great sites. If you're looking for sort of some an introductory place, to just grab something from the public domain, not worry about having to cite the source or understand the um, um, the Creative Commons licenses or anything on it. These are great, public domain all the way. Then there's the Creative Commons, and this is also really valuable. It's a little bit more work because uh, the things in the Creative Commons are not necessarily public domain, um, but uh, it's a really great site for providing you a link into um, all these kinds of things that you can use creatively and to disseminate your knowledge. So, and it just is at the bottom here, like under traditional copyright, all the rights are reserved and you have to get permission to use something, to reproduce it, to make changes to it. Whereas in the Creative Commons, 
um, the people who created it, they've got a lot more power about um, saying, hey, like I made this, but you're free to use it. Or I made this and here are the things you can do. So this is, I know it's going to seem daunting at first. Um, this is my new favorite graph about licensing permissions. Um, and you can see at the bottom, this is the least open or the least, it doesn't let you do stuff version at the bottom, which is the, the copyright symbol. And then at the very top, which is the copyright symbol, but with the slash through it, and that means public domain. So if you see this sign, um, it means it's in the public domain, go forth, put it into your presentations or your patient handouts or your training sessions or whatever it is you're doing, you're free to use it. And, um, and so at the top, these are the things that are the most open, the most free for you to use. And then they get a bit more restrictive as you come down. So how do we make it be not so daunting? Well, these symbols, um, they all mean something. And so the, the person or the by is the attribution. So who is it by? Sometimes people just say like, yes, I created this. I just want you to credit me or attribute that this came for me. Um, and so these are sort of four of the most common ones. Uh, the non-commercial means you're free, like I made this, but you're free to use it. You just can't make money off of it, which is pretty reasonable. Um, so you could use it with patients or you could use it in a presentation. Uh, you just can't be selling it. No derivatives, meaning that you can use it. You just can't make any changes to it. And share alike is if you've made any changes, you just have to make it, um, you have to have the same uh, Creative Commons licenses for others to be able to use it. So uh, you can see here then in the most like easiest to use, um, the most common ones are that it's Creative Commons, that's what the CC is for. And the by, who is it by? So you have to provide attribution or the share alike. And then when it's a little less, um, a little less restrictive, that's when you're talking about not, um, you can't use for commercial purposes. And then even more restrictive are the ones like you can use it, but you can't make changes to it. And when we say make changes, that might be like you might um, to have it fit nicely on your slides, you might need to crop, crop some of the edges off or you might want to put a different title on it, or you might want to turn it into a meme. So, you know, put different phrases and things on it. Um, that would, if it has uh, sort of the no derivatives license, you're allowed to do that. Uh, but if it's in any of these other ones, then you are. So for the ones that, oops, for the ones that do have this person, this or the BY, um, that say you have to provide attribution. I know this is like, uh, taking you back to when you were in university and the professors were like, and if I see any period that is out of space or a comma that is wrong or too many spaces put in, then you lose like a grade point for every every time there's a mistake. It is not that um, regimented uh, and it's pretty, it's a lot more straightforward. So if you were providing an attribution, you have to include the title with the link to where you found it. And not only is this helpful uh, or not only is this appropriate, but it also helps you remember where the heck you found this, because if you've ever spent sort of 20 minutes looking for images, you know that you go to a bunch of different places and then you sort of forget where you found the one that you liked. So just keeping a recording as you're going through of where you've been finding different things is really helpful and it's appropriate if they're asked if the image requires you to provide attribution. Uh, you have to say who the author is, um, where they got it, where you got it from, and the type of license. So I know you're thinking like, oh my goodness, I'm just going to be searching the public domain. Creative Commons seems too hard. It's too tricky. So uh, it's not actually. So I was searching the Creative Commons. I was looking, I used the search term nurse. I came across this picture. I thought this was really great. It's showing, you know, someone who's drowning in information, but is starved for knowledge. And um, what I I, and it says some rights are reserved. And I was like, okay, what rights are those? I clicked on that. It, oh, I thought I had it here. Um, I clicked on that and what happened was it popped down and it all it did was it showed me the CC BY 2.0. 
which means that I have to provide attribution called nursing books. You can see there's the hyperlink here. So I link to that Flickr page. It's by Walt Sternberger, so I've linked to him. And I've included the link for the CCBY 2.0. I literally need to put this in um, after I clicked on this, some rights are reserved. That is exactly what it showed me. I grabbed that and I pasted it onto my slide. It was that easy. So um, I know that this has been technical and that you just want to learn how, where to search for your images um, and that you just want to find like cute little pictures uh, uh, that you can use in your presentations. Um, and so we've got one more. Um, this is my last slide, and then we're turning it over to Christine. But this, I love this as, um, as a guide about can I use that picture? And so we'll come here. And I will just zoom in a little bit. So this is a really great um, tool, or it's a really great flowchart to take you through something. So can I use that picture? We'll actually use this picture as an example. So can I use that picture? First I come to, do I own the copyright? Nope, I didn't create this. I didn't publish it. I have nothing to do with it. So I say no. Did I create the picture? myself no did i get permission from the owner and that's something you can do you can often pop somebody a message and say hey i'm doing this thing can i use this thing that i found of yours and quite often they'll say yes sometimes they'll say no or sometimes they'll say you need to pay me money for that or whatever um but often it's worth a try and did i purchase the right to use this not for this one no so then and if i'd answered yes to any of these then yes you can use that so I said no, and then it just takes me through um, the same kinds of easy to follow things. Is this in the Creative Commons? Is this in the public domain? Am I using it under fair use? And in this one, we're doing an education session. I am showing you this graphic from the site um, on the internet. Uh, um, I'm not selling it. We're just doing some education here. Uh, and so in which case, yes, I am not copy making a million copies. I'm showing it to you live. Um, and so I'm able to use it. So this is really great if you're feeling, um, if you're you know committed to finding some great images, but you're feeling daunted, this is a really great tool to be using. Now, back to our slides and over to Christine. Now, Christine, do you want me to make you the presenter or do you just want me to show this and then you'll go live? Um, if you can make me the presenter, that would be great. Okay. And then I can let's just change it over and maybe we'll just pause as we're changing presenters. Um, and then if anybody has any questions about um, the amazing world of copyright, fair dealing, fair use <laughs> and public domain, <laughs> You can let me know. Otherwise, over to you, Christine. Yeah, so far, no questions. But yeah, feel free to, to ask questions at any time. Can you see my screen, Orby? Yes, excellent, okay. Um, so yeah, so now for the fun part. Um, now, now that you know everything about Creative Commons and stuff, um, so when you're looking for images, just like when you're looking for other kinds of information, where you go is going to depend on what it is you're looking for, right? So that requires a very clinical, um, like illustration or image, uh, versus like you're on the social committee and you're making a poster for, like, if this was last year, like the, the holiday tea or something like that. You'd probably want different pictures so you go different places, right? So we're gonna we're gonna talk about kind of both sides of things, um, and. There are actually quite a few places you can go on um, on the web to find images. Um, when you get your slides, you're going to see we've got um, a few similar to what you see up here now. Uh, a lot of people know about Flickr, um, but the, the one I've got here is Pixabay. I like that one, um, and there are a few others. Um, and it's it's pretty straightforward, right? So you have a search box. Um, you know what you want, you type in what you're looking for, and it does a search for you. Okay, so, and and I'll, I'll point out now that um, a lot of times you can say whether you want photos, 
Um, you can see here you can switch to like illustrations, like if you want something that's not an actual photo, but like more like a, a drawing or, or something like that. Um, and sometimes you can look for videos as well. Okay, so um, much like with Google, um, it's it's all about the keywords that you're using. Um, now in this one, I'm, I, I have a couple examples. If if there's something in particular you guys want to look for, you can always pop that in the chat as well. Um, something that's really topical like COVID, it's, 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 you know, the odds are good. You're going to find images related to that in something like this, um, but they're probably going to be very different from some of the more clinical sources. So let's type in COVID. Um, super straightforward, right? And it's, it's, a, it's, it's slightly deceiving because they put it in little, little gray letters, um, but the stuff that it shows you up at the top, these are the ones you got to buy right so a lot of times there are free things um kind of tacked onto that there are uh, things that you would buy as well um but below this top top level we've got pictures that are are royalty free that you can download and use and we've we've got like a virus we've got someone who's all uh suited up uh, we've even got the mona lisa <laughs> wearing a mask right so depending on on what it is you're trying to find like for what purpose um you can get a mix of things right got somebody washing their hands um if it's something a little more more mundane like let's say um again in the in the non-covid times there was like a staff barbecue or something and you're looking for pictures of of hot dogs right so type in hot dog I'm going to get a certain set of images, right? So again, I've got my my ones that I would need to buy some down further below, right? Now you'll notice as I keep going, we've got some we've got lots of pictures of hot dogs. We also have some some um dogs, <laughs> some fluffy puppies. Um so again, you know, I mean, it's done pretty good, but if I want to be more specific, I can put hot dog in quotation marks. And that's going to look as as a phrase, right? So we've still got the pictures of hot dogs with mustard and whatnot, but if I scroll down, those pictures of the dogs, they're gone, right? So you can you can refine things a little bit that way. Um, these these pages often will have options. Um, like I said, you can do photos, you could just do illustrations. Um, but you can also do things like size. Um, this one has orientation, so if you're looking for something vertical versus horizontal. Um, we've got some categories, things tend to be tagged, right? So if you're like, well, I put in hot dogs, but really I just want anything to do with food. Um, we'd, uh, I guess that would be more useful with the dog situation. Um, then you could narrow things down that way. Again, size, you know, if you're looking for a particular size, colors, that kind of thing. All right, so if, where'd that go? I like the little dancing hot dog. I can click on that one and it gives me more information, right? So um, we've got, oh, here we go, bottom corner. So it's it says what type of file it is, what the resolution is, because depending on what you're using it for, that might matter. Um, it's got the category, food and drink. You can see how many times it's been downloaded. Um, and if I click on free download, it gives me different options for sizes, right? So if I don't want one that's super big, I can get one that's a little smaller and then download it. Um, fairly straightforward, right? Um, sometimes the free sites, they'll limit the number of things you can download a day, but um, I guess as long as you don't have to have like 200 images by like tomorrow, you're probably good. Um, okay, so how are we doing so far? Any questions, comments? No questions that I can see. Okay, everyone's everyone's running to search for hot dogs. Um, now I'm going to actually skip ahead. Um, Orvi's comment earlier reminded me. So um, most of the things, like she said, that the uh, the U.S. government put out are available in the public domain, but not always. Okay, and so here is an example of the National Cancer Institute visuals online. Um, 
and they have some featured images, although if you are very observant, you'll notice they have this tiny little box. And if you click on it, you can see that there's actually way more categories of stuff um, that you can, you can look for. But um, if you click on the anatomy stuff, if we just wanted to scroll through, this is, this is an example of stuff that is not in the public domain. So I clicked on, on the image. It gives us all kinds of information. It's got a description. Um, it says, you know, the date it was created. Um, and it says that th there, there are indeed re reuse restrictions. Let me see if I can make this bigger. So this is copyright protected. Um, and if you want to use it, you got to contact uh, Therese Winslow, right? So they give you this person's, um, I was going to say phone number, their email. Um, so you can, you can contact them like Orbiset and say, hey, I found this. This is perfect for what I'm doing. Is it okay if I use it? And then, um, and then you can go from there. All right. So yeah, um, and just like other sites, when you do a search, um, sometimes there are tricks like with the with the, with the quotation marks for phrases. Um, uh, just just because I thought this was was interesting, we're gonna look for hot dog here. And guess what? They've actually got a picture of a hot dog. Uh, I'm not sure why it's only 68% relevant, according to the website. <laughs> I'm looking at Orvi's face here. She's astounded. Um, I figure this is because it's to do with nutrition, right? Um, that's, that's the only thing I can think of. So if we, we were to click on that, um, the top of the category is food and drink. It's a color photo. It's in JPEG. Um, it's got a number it's from 1994 and again we've got the different sizes right so you can look at it to get a closer look if you click on view um, or you could just hit download and it would download and you could save it right now this one this one is public domain and can be freely reused you've got the little note there um, it just says that you need to credit the source right and where possible the creator listed above so the creator was who was the creator oh Renee Comet so there you go all right. Um, yeah, that one was interesting. I thought. I don't know. I don't know if, if uh, you know, National Cancer Institute would be my go-to place to look for images of hot dogs, but I guess you just never know. But I, I do think, Christine, that's really helpful because I do know a bunch of our educators and those who work in public health. They're often looking for kinds of, you know, diagrams like. Should you choose a hot dog or should you choose maybe something that's healthier? Um, like when you're doing those kinds of um, images, then uh, it is it is helpful to have a source like this um, to go to instead of cruising, through, you know, to have this as a standard, you know, public domain kind of um, place. So this is awesome. For sure. Um, and if we were to go to, um, there is an... So the advanced search is not terribly, uh, actually, I think it's more search options. So if we look at uh, topics, so you can do a, a keyword search, you can limit to dates, your topic, your image type again. So like if it's a color photo or an illustration, or I guess they have videos as well, um, then you can put those uh, filters in place. But if we look here at, say it's like, I just, I just need pictures of food, right? I'm doing something to do with food. So I click food. Oh, no words or phrases. Oh, oh, but it worked anyway. Look at that. Um, so then you can also have more more broad kind of um, searching and finding um, as opposed to think something that's like super specific. So if you needed pictures of grapefruit or something, you can see there's grapefruit. Um, apparently they have some some B-roll video about cancer prevention, which I guess they must bring nutrition and, and food into that. Um, but yeah, and so you can see that they've got all kinds of different things. Um, you know, they've got pictures of a family drinking juice. There you go. In case you, in case you need a picture of a family drinking juice. Um, yeah, so that's, that's another example, um, of a site there. Um, the, uh, I'm going to close this one and go back here. So, um, Sorry, just one second. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, so like I said, different different sources depending on uh, what you're what you're interested in. Um, 
the the ones that are on Pixabay and, and similar ones, they're more of like your your stock photos and things like that. Um, and I believe, um, Orvi, you said you went to, was it to Creative, Creative Commons search you looked for nurses? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that is an excellent segue. So I'm not going to go to the Creative Commons search website itself, um, but something that I find is handy, they have a plugin. Um, if you if you find that you just kind of want to be able to, you know, zip in, do a search for an image and zip out again, um, on my browser, I don't, it's, it's pretty small, there's this little CC here, I've installed the plugin, and you just bring it up, and then you can you can do a search. So like if I'm I'm doing a search for flu shots, right? I do a search, and I get a whole bunch of things, right? So I've got um, somebody who's getting a jab. I've got um, some signage. I've got oh, looks like an adverse reaction. That's not so great. Um, I've got a, a variety of things. It looks like a must be a like a flu clinic. There's a lineup. Um, you can load more results if, if you don't find um, stuff that's interesting there. Um, but it, again, here you have settings, right? So when I click on the settings, you can see, you can say, I want things that you can use commercially. I want things I can uh, adapt or modify if that's what you need. Um, and they've got those licenses again, right? So the, the BY, the BY, you know, attribution, uh, public domain, etc. And then they list off their sources. So if you are, um, you kind of have something in mind, like a particular set of, of, of uh, websites, you can specifically look for stuff from them. So like the Smithsonian, for example, um, or SpaceX. Um, if, you, if, if you're like my husband, he, he loves this, this all the SpaceX stuff with all the rockets and things. Um, and you can just look at all of them or just be very specific, right? So file types, photos, illustrations, again, sizes, small, medium, large, that kind of thing. Um, and you'll notice like this one has Flickr, right? Uh, but it doesn't have some of the other ones um, like Pixabay or Unsplash. Um, and those are listed in the, um, the, hand the handout as well. So. Again, it's it's a good source, but if you don't find something through them, you can always move on to something else too, right? So uh, if I go back, oops, bring that up again. So I did flu shot just as as two words. If I tried the phrase, that should work here as well. And so the pictures are largely the same, um, but you'll notice they're they're in different order, and there are some that I guess have floated up to the top that maybe we're on the next page, um, right? So I'm not sure, I guess that's the flu shot sign um, in front of a building, um, right? So if, for example, I like this one, I like the looks of this one, someone's getting their shot. So if I click on it, this is this is handy. So it's already generated that credit um, for me, like Orvi was talking about. You need to give uh, the name of it, what it's called, and the license. So you can see that that's all right here. You can just copy that and paste it, um, you know, in your PowerPoint slides or you know in your in your document that you're making, and you're good to go. And it's explained uh, below as well. You got to credit the creator, creator, pardon me, and commercial use is not permitted, right? Um, so much like other other things, you know, you've got your tags. They've got some related images. Um, there's some very interesting looking ones about that looks like spread within the population, that kind of thing. So um, that's just a uh, a super quick look at the uh, Creative Commons. Um, what do you call that plugin? Thank you. Um, so yeah. And I, I, I think that, again, like I said, it depends on, depends on what you're looking for, right? Uh, where you want to start. It is super easy to uh, spend a lot of time <laughs> doing these things. So I will, I will say that. Um, so again, these, these Creative Commons and the Pixabay, those are kind of generally the ones that are out there. Um, We've also got um, up to date, and up to date is one that is not generally available to the public, um, but you guys have access through MyNet. 
Um, and, and again, like this would be your, your clinical stuff, right? Like you're not looking for hot dogs here. Um, so if I look for tonsillitis, if I spelled, I think I spelled that right. Um, it's not really obvious where the pictures are. Um, but if you go into the, the entry for what you're looking for, in this case, um, peritonsillar cellulitis and abscess is what I picked. And if you go down to the bottom, we've got graphics, right? So if we say select all, um, we can see all of them and we can figure out what it is, if any of them that we want to use, right? So here we've got some more of your, your medical illustrations. Um, so I just clicked on that to make that bigger. Um, so it's, you know, everything is labeled and you got like the side view. So, and at this point you could export, export, pardon me, directly into PowerPoint um, by clicking on the link at the top. Um, and incidentally, it'll even come with this little description at the bottom, right? Um, it doesn't give you the, the, like the, the neat little citation like the Creative Commons thing did, um, but it does, you know, have, you know, it's copyright up to date and it's affiliates, all rights reserved, um, but it is um, part of part of the subscription that you can use these things for, you know, like education purposes and things like that. Um, I think that they would be upset if you like published a book and and sold it and made like scads of money <laughs> using using their images. But um, I'm sure I'm sure everyone everyone is on board with not not doing that. Um, so because really. Um, the odds that uh, that people are going to use these things for non-educational purposes, I think, are probably pretty low. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so that's another another interesting feature of pub. Uh, pardon me. Up to date. That um, if you if you weren't really uh, super, you know, a, a big user, you might not you might not realize it's there. But it is. So that's pretty awesome. All right, um, I'll, I'm I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna real quick um, just mention another one: is the Public Health Image Library. Again, this is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention at the U.S., and they have you know they have their featured collections, um, but you can do a quick search at the top. You can say if you want photos, you can say if you want illustrations. Um, I'm gonna do one real quick for ticks. Uh, everyone loves ticks. And again, we've got, you know, our results. And if we click on on the thing, we can see it. It's got information. And um, I think the government sites are generally pretty good about having like all this kind of metadata, right? So it's got a description. Um, it's got uh, who who created it. Um, they've even gone so far as to do like library type cataloging or indexing, where it's like going down that whole uh phylum order etc cetera, etc cetera, thing going down to uh exoc ex today i'm sorry <laughs> you can't say it um but again and at the very bottom it talks about um usage restrictions in which case this one is public domain and is freely available okay so yeah and i was uh, i was just gonna note in that copyright notice christine um that uh you know now now we've all learned that public domain i mean if you take away like three things from today hopefully that is one of them is that public domain means you can do whatever you want with it yes so note to self um yeah but that uh that brings us to the end of our, our demo. Um, like, oops, like I said, we have in our slides, we've got links. So if you um, want to look at some of the things we looked at, as well as some extra ones, like for exam example, the Lane Biomedical Library Bioimage Search from Stanford, that's in there. Um, Medline Plus is another one for patient information. Um, that one is kind of similar to how UpToDate is set up where you would search for a topic like MRIs or something, you would go to the entry, and then within the table of contents, you could see, oh, there's pictures, right? And so then you could you could access them that way. Okay, so that has been a whirlwind tour of some potential sites for finding images. Um, I guess if we if we have any questions, we can try and answer them now. 
Thanks. For yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we scheduled to 2.45 because we know that when you meet virtually um, that you need a break uh, before your three o'clock meeting. So that is all the new content we've prepared, but we will be here um, to answer any questions. And I thought maybe as, as Christine was going from amazing site to amazing site to amazing site, and I was thinking about how long it takes me to find like my perfect image when I'm looking for something. Um, if you're looking for sort of like tips on how to practically, uh, the first I would say start with the concept of the image that is most important to your presentation. So maybe it's your title slide, or maybe it's um, the uh, the image that you're going to tell a story about. So you just want something um, you know really visual to present while you tell a story or whatever it is. Start with that one. And you know, pick a site that you feel is comfortable. Maybe it's a, a public domain one. Maybe it's one of the um, awesome ones Christine just, just showed us. Start with that one, and then work from there. And along the way, you might find some other ones like that amazing. You know, who knew that that uh, you know cancer would have the hot dog your your perfect hot dog picture? Um, uh, but yeah, start with your most important one and go on from there. Cause sometimes, I mean, sometimes you find your perfect image in five seconds and you're golden. Um, other times it takes much longer. Yeah, um, and we've, we've got a question um, about image quality for different uses. Um, and I, and, and it, in a way it kind of depends on what the use is. So like bigger, um, bigger file size comes with um, higher resolution. Right. So if this is something that is going to be like super blown up, um, then then you would need to get um, higher resolution. Right. Um, I know that um, sometimes if uh, if you're just doing like like I said, if you're doing a poster for the staff barbecue, not not a huge, huge issue. Um, I would say if you are on on one of those sites that gives you multiple size options, um, is to just try and and try see which one is the best, right? Because um, it's it's a bit of a trade off, right? Because you don't want a file that is so incredibly large um, that it just bogs everything down um, in terms of like running speed and memory and all that kind of stuff. Um, but generally, as 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 big as you can get is generally better um, within 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 reason, right? Like yeah, the, and the smallest big one, if that makes if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, because um, and like Chris, I think maybe just to say it another way, which is if you if st you know storing electronic files is not an issue for you, then download the highest resolution. Um, but if you want to be, you know, cognizant of how much space you have, then uh, choose a smaller one. And I know for if I'm just pulling images for a PowerPoint um, that's not going to be on, you know, like I'm not in a, I'm just showing it here in a webinar. I'm not going to be in a lecture theater or in a in a um, in the convention center showing it on a huge screen. I'll just download the lowest. Um, the smallest file because I don't need a big image. But if you are going to be, you know, making a big post, a banner or something like that, then definitely go for the the higher res one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and like resizing. I don't know if you've ever tried to get a a, a picture that's very small and then you're like, I need this bigger, and then you do the drag to make it bigger, and then it gets all blurry. Yeah, that's 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 because file size. Um, I, I don't know about any of you, but I have a chronic problem where I I, I guess I, I have too many files or something. And so I, I keep getting this notice. It's like, you have to delete some stuff. And so I delete some things just to the point where it's it's OK. It's not freaking out at me anymore. Um, and then I get some more, and then I have to delete them again later. Um, <laughs> but, but that's definitely a consideration for sure. Good question. So I haven't seen any other questions in the chat box. And just a reminder, we will share the slides. Uh, you'll have our email addresses if you do think of something. And we thank everyone very much for coming today. Thanks. I hope you hope you have fun searching for images. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>